Thou know who I am and why I am here. Aye, Cutter, there has been a murder. What knoweth thou of murder? That I did not do the murder, and that is all. What more have thee for me? Only this. I am one of three brothers. One of us always tellings the truth. One of us always lies. And the third of us does not speak in at all, but honks. If I find in thee a liar, there is no thing I can do to save in thee. I could. Thou art a servant of the wood. Yo, these guys are cool. Also, I just realized they've got several hats on. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Shadows Over Loathing. We rejoin Sir Codsworth III in the barn, uh, Farmer Chekhov's barn, might I add, with uh, Simone's robot that has apparently gone berserk. Okay, that's not quite what I was expecting. Uh, we are currently filling the gas can in the prologue for our bus, driving to Ocean City to help Uncle Murray with whatever the hell he needs help with. Fishing rod, I'll take that. She won't miss it, you assume. Oh, so we can jump. I forgot about that. Oh my god, we can fish. Um, and uh, our gas can is currently 200% full. I believe there's an achievement if we get it to 300%, so of course we're doing that. Uh, let's see, muscle. Pa this is just a painting of a bunch of tools. It's not even actually tools. Yeah, sure. Let's see what the fishing rod does for us. You didn't catch anything, but it was good practice. Okay. <laughs> in West of Loathing, to pick locks, you needed needles, which could only be found in haystacks. Uh, you have a recurring nightmare about searching for something in one of these, yeah. Based on the arrangement of objects around it, you conclude that this is a machine for turning hay bales into loose hay. A baleful pile of hay. Oop, didn't mean to leave. Alright, well before we go presumably fight this mechanical contraption, I will just remind you to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I hope you're enjoying Shadows Over Loathing so far. And, uh, you know, all that good stuff. I'm gonna get past this thing without destroying it. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, this is easy! Simone's monster is going to zap for three damage. Yeah, I, I can just kill you in one turn. Have a rock. And a shot. I didn't even need the rock. Simone's monster is now just a pile of parts on the floor. Rest in parts. Can I do anything with it? Apparently not. It's a workbench for welding. It's mostly tools you don't understand, but you do find some gloves. You got an item, welding gloves. Plus one hot armor. A pair of thick gloves designed to protect your hands from errant sparks caused by your negligence and lack of welding skills. Fair enough. 233%. We need two more. Uh, okay, we've got it equipped. Ooh, can we unpack our luggage here? I, I need to be checking this in more spots. You weren't born in a barn, and you're not going to move into one now. Alright, alright. Had to try. You'd go up there if it weren't for your hay fever, and you're falling out of lofts fever. Hmm. There's probably some in here. What is our strength at? Muscle is at one. Okay. Um... Do we have enough XP for a level? We do. That's probably one that we really want as soon as possible, but having the extra skills to do what we need is definitely important too. So now we're at two muscle. We don't want to miss out on things. That's for mysticality. Do we have anything else for muscle? Oh, we could use the fishing rod as a weapon. It's a fishing rod used for fishing and definitely not for fighting. What do we need for this one? Mysticality 5. Okay, we'll have to hopefully get another item we can use. Ooh, maybe maybe he'll give us another um, clam jerky if we ask. Be right back, Chekhov. Used to be able to move and jump. 
Ooh! An open fire and there's something in there. Because we got the hot armor. This is not the indicated use of those gloves, you know. This is a tool for prying things open, like the door to a saloon for ravens, or a tiny crate containing a tiny tavern for magpies, or the boarded up windows of a speakeasy for jackdaws. You get it. Lol. No, he won't give us any more clam jerky. Unfortunate. Nothing more with you. And is that everything we can do here? I guess so. Hmm. We should be able to get this thing fuller though, right? High ghost, plat. Is there anything more here? If we had three mysticality, we could do that. So we are missing stuff, I think. Yeah. We have to level up the mysticality and eat the pears to be able to get in there. I guess we wasted the clam jerky. We could have done that a little bit better. That's fine. That's what future playthroughs are for. Not sure if I'll do any like multiple playthroughs on the channel. There is definitely a lot that you can do with it. Oh my god. Fishing in a gas pump. You should have known there weren't any fish in there. You can see the entire thing from here. Yeah, it's cool I got to try though. It's a turtle! Turtle seems to be heading to Ocean City too. At this rate, it might beat you there. Take it with you. Oh my God! Yes. Um. Shit. Okay, I wasn't expecting to name a turtle. Uh. I'm gonna call you Franklin. If you know, you know. Turtle's like a slow bandage. Each round of combat, Franklin heals a random wounded ally by his mysticality. That's pretty cool. Okay. So he's a, a healer. Is that really all we can do here? I think it is. We don't have enough XP to get quick wet. So we've already got the other two. Too bad I leveled up the strength one instead of that. I still had a chance to get whatever that was. Yeah, I think that's everything we can do. Time to get out of the prologue. Bye, Chekhov. I hope I come back for your gun at some point. Blue cola, red cola. Hey there, friend. Any luck with the gas? You show the driver your gas can. Well, his gas can. Well, huh. This can doesn't usually hold that much gas. Not sure how you did that. Well, whatever. Are you ready to hit the road? Yeah, let's get out of here. Now we get the XP. Ah, well. You climb back on the bus and return to your seat. And soon you're dozing off to the sound of rain spattering on the window beside you. Unfortunately, it's barely an approximation of sleep. The sort of sleep that you slip into so gradually that you don't even know you're asleep until something wakes you up. Plunkett Street! And you realize that your meandering thoughts of the past few mi minutes have been utterly strange. Shadowy tendrils of whispering ideas. Hey kid, this is your stop, right? That are now totally forgotten. Oh, what? All oh, ashore, what's going ashore? Thanks for traveling, Willis Busco. 
Welcome to Ocean City, Plunkett Street. That's where we need to go. But first, we're going to dig through a trash can. To find a discarded bottle of cologne. The bottle was inexpensive to begin with, and throwing it away didn't make it any more valuable. Increases your stench armor by one. Ah, stench. That's a note. That's the thing. The note on the door says please. For Elise. I think the store sells broken glass and drafts. Oh, well, they're uh, super in business. This building looks perfectly solid. Maybe it's just the people renting it that were condemned. This trash's reach has exceeded its can's grasp. I dig through it. Given the current conditions, dark and stormy, you probably shouldn't wander into any alleys. Some ne'er-do-well have deliberately vandalized the streetlight. The door to the newspaper office is locked, and the windows are boarded up. Looks like print really is dead. We thought it would have at least seven or eight more decades left. Securbarus, secure building and loan. It's late, the bank is closed, and there's three dog headlocks. You can't see anything interesting within walking distance in that direction. I know, I know, game. I'll have more freedom later, but for now, I must look at everything I can. It's a bus stop. The army surplus store is closed for the night. Wait, the army is cola? I see. I thought we were talking about pop. Soda pop. Sale, sell, sale. Going out of business. Going seems inaccurate. Probably nothing you want in here anyway. This hobo seems wholly unperturbed by the rain. Nice weather we're having. He smiles, then looks up and lets the rain splash on his face for a while. <laughs> Suits me just fine, I guess. A wise man once said, the rain falls on poor men and rich men alike. Is that before umbrellas were invented, or...? My name's Gus, by the way. I feel like he was in West of Loathing. I, I vaguely recognize this character. You're probably going to hear me say that a lot, and I'm probably going to be wrong every time. Hi, I'm Sir Codsworth. Pleased to meet you, Sir Codsworth. Say, you wouldn't have a couple of meat to spare, could you? Yeah, sure. You flip Gus some meat and he beams. Thank you very much, Sir Codsworth. Old Gus won't forget your kindness, you bet. I hope we encounter him again, but if not, that's fine. Gus smiles at you and continues to enjoy getting rained on. There's nothing in that direction except the road you arrived on, and walking all the way back there probably isn't a good use of your time right now. Alright, alright. Murray's Antiques it is. The bell over the door jangles as you walk into Murray's Antiques. The young woman at the counter looks up as you enter. Oh, hi. You must be Sir Codsworth. We don't get many customers at this time of night. Or at all, really. That's me. You were expecting me? Yeah, Murray didn't say much about you, but he gave me that letter to mail. My name's Jessica. No, oh, jeez. You're soaking wet. Come on in and I'll get you a towel. <clears throat> you walk over to the counter, trying not to drip on any vintage bric-a-brac, as Jessica grabs a threadbare bath towel from a shelf and pulls the tag off before tossing it to you. Thanks. Was Uncle Murray here? His letter wasn't very specific. He... isn't. You said that in kind of an ominous way. Where is he? Jessica sighs. I wish I knew. He had a line on another artifact and said it was going to be a tough one. I told him he should get some backup, but he wasn't willing to wait. He just wrote that letter and told me to mail it if he didn't come back. Is there something I'm missing here? This is an antique shop, right? You make trying to talk to Grain Aunt Ruthie into selling her mother's Chesterfield sound like a deadly spy mission. Yeah, this is gonna take some explaining. So because I've got the big heart perk, I have an extra dialogue option here. That's cool. We've got to help him. Jessica leads you into a back room furnished with some desks and some strange-looking machinery. Welcome to our back office, the hub of our little operation. I'm guessing by operation, you're talking about something other than antiques. Well, yes and no. See, a few years ago, Murray found out that there's a bunch of antiques circulating that are, well, hinky would be a real understatement. Hinky? Murray called them tainted. Dark magic, real bad mojo, you know, cursed. 
Oh, for a second, I thought you were making bathtub gin or something. You gotta be kidding me, are you serious? We'll joke. It's no joke. That's what our real job is here. The antique store is just, well, not exactly a front. And we find a lot of regular antiques, too. And selling them keeps us in the scratch. But really, we're trying to hunt down all these evil doodads and neutralize them so nobody gets hurt. And Uncle Murray went out to get one and never came back. And that's the long and short of it, yep. Yeah. And what do you say? Are you in? Yeah, sure. Let's go nuts. It's not like we were doing anything else. I mean, we worked at that abandoned gas station, right? Were we doing anything else right now? Probably not. You hear the shop door opening, and after a moment, a goblin pokes her head into the office. Oh, right, goblins are a thing. Forgot about that. Just, just don't worry about it. Goblins exist. Hello? Oh, hey, that's swell timing. Hey, Gabby. Murray's sister's kid showed up. Come meet him. Hi, Gabby. Pleased to meet you. Ooh, did you see the little pronoun pick? Pick your pronoun. That's cool. I first game did not have that, so it's it's pretty cool to see that this one does. Hi, Gabby. Pleased to meet you. Hello. Hi. The pleasure is all Gabby's. Gabby, would you be a dear and carry his luggage to Murray's room and grab some blankets and stuff out of the cupboard? He can sleep there until we find Murray. You've gotten it. Gabby picks up your suitcase and carries it through a door in the back of the room. I didn't try and unpack out in the rain, damn it. Great, I could really use some sleep. This is our home base, I assume. This desk is a mess. Ask Jessica about it. Whose desk is this? Murray's. I keep nagging at him to straighten it up before someone bumps into it, and we have to call the National Guard to dig them out of an avalanche. With curse-proof shovels and a squad of exorcists handy. Anyway, best not to mess with it. Will do. I mean, won't. No, I'm messing with it. Damn. You're not sure what this clock is telling, but it sure ain't time. There's nobody you need to call right now. Messages none. There's nobody at this desk. Hey, Jessica, whose desk is this? Charles Wallace, our handyman. He's up fixing a leak on the roof right now, but he'll come back later tonight. I see. A white cat is snoozing on an old towel. What's this cat's name? Calliope. Murray got her a couple of years ago. I think you can collect cats? Scritch behind the cat's ears. You give Calliope a good scritching, but she doesn't react at all. Why doesn't Calliope like me? Eh, yeah, she'll warm up eventually. Try giving her some sardines. She loves those. Do you have any sardines? No, we're all out. You can get some more tomorrow. They have them at the Cola War surplus store next door. Okay. Modern radio stands here in defiance of the concept of antiques. You cannot even hazard a guess as to what this contraption does. You don't have time to play games right now. It's always time to play chess. Not really, but... This is your new bedroom, apparently. You can hear Gabby bustling around in there, making the bed and such. Well, I'm gonna turn in. Good night. Hang on a sec. You can't go to sleep yet. I'm pretty sure I can. I bet I could do it right here while I'm still standing up. Haha, <laughs> well, I hate to spring this on you, but there's something we need you to do before the night's over. I mean, I don't want to be a total pushover here. Yeah, fine. You know those cursed artifacts I was talking about? Since info on them is so sketchy, we've been working on a machine that can detect them with radio waves. I call it the Detectotron 1000. We've just gotten it up and running since Murray left. And turned out there's a tainted thing practically right on our doorstep. Hmm, that doesn't sound great. Yeah, it's not great. It's not good. Blah, I mixed up the good and great there. I was gonna have Gabby go get it. That's why she came over tonight. But since you turned up out of the blue... Are you sure this can't wait till morning? I'm really sorry about this, but the end of the world might well be the sort of thing we're talking about. Cripes, you're really putting the hard sell on me here. You won't have far to go. It's just down the other end of the block if the readings are right. There's a newspaper office that got shut down earlier this year. Should be in there. Gabby will go with you. She's good in a fight. A fight, aw oh, geez, or a fight, heck yeah. Hopefully it won't come to that, but you never know. Hey, Gabby. 
Gabby reappears with an expectant grin. Go to the newspaper office with Sir Codsworth. Oh, but go to the newspaper office with Sir Codsworth and help him get that hat, okay? Okay, Gabby is ready for an action. Let's mosey. I now have a companion. Let out a tired sigh. <sighs> All right, fine. You said it's a hat, a cursed hat. According to the readout, yeah, a men's fedora, probably. And I'm supposed to, what, just break in and take it? Well, not break, exactly. I managed to finagle a spare key out of the guy at the realtor's office. Pretty sure that still counts as breaking and entering. He'll be in and out and back here and in bed before you know it. And there's no alarm system because it's 1928. Well, okay, wish me luck, I guess. Hi, Gabby. Gabby grins and gives you a thub thumbs up. How are you doing, Gabby? Gabby has a readiness for ac an action. You're a real firecracker in a fist fight, huh, Gabby? <laughs> Gabby likes fighting and dancing. The best two things. Gabby invented fight dancing once, but this world was unready for it. Maybe 50 years later. How'd you get mixed up with Murray and the whole antique store deal, Gabby? Oh, it coincided. Gabby was just looking at old clothes and heard over Murray and Jessica talking about a mysterious thing to get. It had an adventure smell. Then Murray said, we're going to need some muscle for this. And Gabby says, Gabby has several muscles, strong ones. And that was what it was. Gabby has been helping since then. So you're a flapper, right? <laughs> yes, Gabby flaps all of the time. Gabby's parents flap too. And Grand Gabby. But it's only been the style for seven or eight... Oh, right. Goblins, um... Well, you don't live very long, huh? Depends on how long you look for it. Parent Gabby popped a year and a half ago. But this Gabby basically is that Gabby and previous ones too. <laughs> it's okay. Don't worry too hard for to get it. Us goblins think human baby making is super crazy. Okay. Goblins have uh, interesting physiology. Have you lived in Ocean City long, Gabby? Oh yes, all of Gabby's life is here. Gabby's great, 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 great grand Gabby came and popped just some blocks from over there. Or two popping, as they would say, haha. -ha. Wow, so your family's been here for quite a while, huh? Yes, 14 years. Oh, and is it looping? It is indeed. Well, this one's new. You know, Gabby, it's been a few years since I spent time in Ocean City, but I don't remember it being this run down. That is a true thing to say. It used to be much more clean and shiny. What happened? The economy's terrific everywhere else in the country. No idea. Economics is not the house Gabby keeps my wheels in. Okay, that's it. Cool. Nice to meet you, Gabster. You open the door and there's just a brick wall behind it. Apparently it goes nowhere. Maybe a portal will open there at some point? Jessica's not going to let you sleep until you get that hat. I just wanted to go look inside, man. Just making sure there's nothing new. Hi, guys. Catch up, Gabby. Of course, the alley's right here. You take a deep breath and unlock the door. You give the key to Gabby for safekeeping. Handwritten note on this desk. Note says, Robson. First Hinden, then Carver. Who's next? Venable says if Burgess comes for him, he's going to karate chop his desk in half. Sincerely, Curtis Curtis. P.S. What's a karate? Interesting. See the corner of a note sticking out from under the desk blotter. Note says, Tucker, I got you that bottle you wanted. I stuck it under the water cooler where Burgess can't find it and rat us out to the prohees. Oh yeah, because alcohol's illegal. Beck, under the water cooler, eh? Surely it's not still there, but it couldn't hurt to check. Half-finished document in the typewriter. Government corruption at all-time high. 
The government has once again slashed funding to city services and social programs, citing waste, but without offering any supporting figures or explaining where the funds have been reallocated to. Additionally, anonymous sources report it cuts off abruptly, maybe as a result of the pink slip next to the writer. Curtis, if I've told you once, I've told you a hundred times. Not enough people buy the paper anymore to keep the lights on in this joint. Electricity is expensive because it is a very recent innovation. As such, fully half of your salary is paid by government subsidies. This is to say that the hand that feeds you is the hand you keep biting. We go way back, buddy, but you've given me no choice. Clean out your desk and scram. Rover Burgess, Editor-in-Chief. Damn. There's a little bit of very, very old coffee left in this percolator. Sure! Pouring yourself this cup of coffee is the first step on a short, nasty journey. A few months ago, somebody decided this coffee wasn't good enough to drink. You apparently disagree with that decision. Gives us one more AP? Well, that's worth. We'll shove whatever we need to in our mouth. Oh, hey, it's one of those a new Arcane Press news feeds things. High tech. Severe storm causes trolley disaster. Prevents five other trolley disasters, lol. Second edition of Princip Principia Mathematica published. We still cannot understand a word of this, says local children. Charles Lindbergh cooks stew. Onlookers report it smells like it might be beef or maybe lamb. References. I get some of them. Today's list of band dances. The Chutney Slider, the Dirty Dirty Blitz, and the Upside Down Tango. Alas, sets, I think. Today's winning racehorses. Grizzlo's mother, too much corn, and how it's her jacket. Babe Ruth gets haircut. Barber says, you think you could have left a better tip. Prohibition agents confiscate 40 barrels of wine, 10 cheese wheels, and some nice fresh honeycomb also seized. Parisian bards declare independence, claim debauched tavern as a sovereign city-state. Jack Dempsey removes teeth to improve boxing skill, <laughs> says Dempsey in an interview. I think that's all of them. Half-finished letter in the typewriter. Letter reads, Reginald. I think Burgess is on to us. We've gotten careless. In fact, maybe I shouldn't be typing this out as a letter instead of just talking to you in person. Why am I doing this? Meet me under the water cooler this afternoon. Aw, oh, crap. Here comes Burgess with a pink slip. Sincerely. Doesn't say who it's from. The writer must have gotten fired before they could type their name. Also, under the water cooler? What's that all about? Hinden, I'm not paying you to publish cockamamie conspiracy theories. In fact, I'm not paying you at all anymore. Clean out your desk and hit the road. P.S. Do you like the word cockamamie that I used up there? It's a slang term I'm coined. It means ridiculous or implausible. I think it's really going to catch on. Whoever worked at this desk for forgot their cufflinks? The left one is engraved, always check, and the right one says your sources. It really makes you think. Cool, we've got a free plus one mysticality. Where is... Where is... Where is... Where is oh, literally right there. Replaces the welding glove. So if we need hot armor, we can put that on, but for now, we'll keep the extra mysticality. Okay, that's those desks. Crumpled up pink with a slip on this desk. Carver, I can't believe I have to tell you this, but it is against company policy for an employee to steal the printing press. You are fired. You are so fired. I need a new phrase to describe it. I'm giving you the axe. And if I see your face in here again, I will both give you the axe and set you on fire. P.S. How did you even lift it? You must have had, what, five accomplices? Unbelievable. Make a mental note to never pick a fight with this Carver person. See a thin three-ring binder on this desk. You got a pneumatic tube system operation manual. This is a reference manual for a citywide network of pneumatic tubes. It looks like the eye had some state-of-the-art delivery infrastructure. We'll deal with the water cooler in a sec. Looks like Venable made good on this threat. 
Nothing. Venable must have taken all the stuff out before smashing it. You don't know what went into this bag, but you know that the only thing that's ever going to come out of it is a congealed mass of foul goo. Reduces an enemy's muscle stats by three. Yeah, we took that. Absolutely took that. And I guess there's the newspapers. 1783 to 1799. Without anything specific you want to look up, this seems like a waste of time. Ah, yes, ghost lady. Tragic accident certain to have no consequences. Tragedy occurred yesterday evening when Hiram O. Crollins, owner of the first mass-produced commercial automobile, registered in the state, accidentally struck and killed the state's first hitchhiker, i.e. a person standing on the side of the road attempting to solicit transportation from passing motorists. Fortunately for Mr. Crollins, the notion that vengeful spirits of the dead might haunt the places of their demise is in murderous, phantasmagoric rage has been rejected by modern science as rather unlikely, wouldn't you say? Unlikely, sure. So we can come back here later if we ever need to look up stuff. That's that's pretty useful. Oh look, a trap door to a secret booze room. Oh. Hi, fish people. There's a huge black skull scrawled on July 22nd, 1917. Guess I can go look that up. It's an underground press. Literally, there's still a newspaper left in it. It's an un uh, This was printed in a secret underground newspaper office. It's a control panel for the pneumatic tube system. Push the green power on button, pull the pump engage lever, adjust the suction rate according to the pressure diagnostic indicators. The red indicator light is on, set the suction. Do I have to memorize this? Oh no, okay. Uh, we're gonna leave that alone for a sec, we'll be right back. The top story from that date is the Ocean City Comptroller's passing of an overly complicated sidewalk right-of-way policy that outlawed street-side newspaper vending machines and limited the maximum allowed width of newsstands to four feet. The story continues to say that watchful eye management raised concerns about loss of revenue and the Comptroller made a vague promise to divert city funds to make up for any future shortfall. I see. Well, we'll head back downstairs. Uh, 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 what? Oh! I didn't even mean to do that. What? A handful of clean water. Pure water, water untainted by even a container. Cure an ally who is on... Just literal, just a handful of water. Okay. I can't believe I missed that. No, I didn't want to leave. Alright, downstairs again we go. Don't forget, there's a pacifist route, pacifist route you can do through this game. So never doing combat. So there's always going to be puzzle solutions. Which is pretty okay. Okay. So, power on button. Green button made a satisfying click, and you hear a motor starting up somewhere. Pump engage lever. A yellow light is glowing on the console. Yellow light. But it's, it only has red, blue, and green. Nothing happens. Oh, we just shut the machine down. Okay. So we will push the green button, pull the lever, turn the knob, I guess, to A or G. Okay, well, if it's yellow, then that means it's... I don't know, I guess E? 
orange light flashes briefly. Okay. Green button, pull the lever, turn the knob. Oh, blue is supposed to be E. What if we just do D? No. I guess I'm going to have to brute force this last bit. Uh, green button, lever, knob, A. Green button, lever, knob, B. Green button, lever, knob, C. Ah! Hi, fish people! Oh! I don't know if I'd call that pacifist, but I guess I didn't fight them. Well, someone's going to get some very strange mail. And how? What were those things anyway? And what were they doing down here? Were they trying to start an underwater newspaper? That wouldn't work. Think would smear. Lol. Well, it's a very old manhole cover. An ominous, vaguely person-shaped stain on the ground. Is that it? Yes, I see the hat. Don't worry. Alright. Terribly cursed fedora. Simple black hat felt fedora. It doesn't look cursed, but it has a palpable aura of menace about this. Nothing good can come of this. I'm not wearing it, am I? I'm not I'm not putting on the cursed hat. Why why would I put on the cursed hat? It's going to return it nice and safe. And not don the cursed hat. I mean if I could save scum, I would probably don the cursed hat. I cannot in fact save scum. I found a hat. I guess it's the one you meant? Doesn't look unusual. Although Yeah. Well it does creep me out a bit. I can't really put my finger on why. I know what you mean. Feels kinda like you have a headache, except you don't actually. More like a feeling of dread. Like something terrible is about to happen, but I don't know what it is yet. Well, that is definitely not related to the fact that I need you to take that hat and go sit at that machine over there. Uh, why? And that's our uncursing machine. Gotta get the curse off that hat, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. But, um, what? Can't we just put the hat in the machine? Why do I need to be involved? Because the machine needs a mind to guide the uncursing process. Together, you'll lift the curse from the hat and transform it into a, a sort of allegorical dream space that the machine can transfix. What? Sorry, I know it's a lot. Let me rephrase. <clears throat> the uncursing machine uses your subconscious mind to drive a wedge between an item and its curse. The item is cleansed relatively easily, but that doesn't negate the curse fully. Once separated from the item, the machine stores the curse and allows you to phys psychically project into it to try and resolve the metaphorical scenario at the core of its existence. And that's where things can get a little weird. Yeah, I know it sounds crackers, but you'll have to just give it a try to understand. I see. I'll go and curse it. Also, is this our handyman dude? Charles Wallace. You must be Charles Wallace. I'm Sir Codsworth. That I am! Pleased to meet you, Sir Codsworth! What do you do around here? Oh, you general handyman sort of stuff. I keep the lights on and the water running. Built the Detectotron and the Uncursing Machine, too. Wow, that's some real high-tech wizardry. No, it's nothing, really. How does that weird and cursing machine work? Oh, I only built the thing. I can't begin to tell you how it works, sir. The innards are all wired up to a little porcelain cat figurine that Murray found somewhere. Well, that's weird. In a real traditional sense, yep. Hmm. Alright, that's it for him. Still a brick wall? Still just a brick wall behind it. So odd. Alright, well, let's do it. You sit in the chair, which is surprisingly comfortable, and pull the weird metal dome thing down over your head. What would you like to uncurse today? No sooner have you sat down than the machine with a hiss positively whiffs the fedora straight up into the dome. The hat rattles around in there angrily like a snake in a cement mixer, and after a good loud minute, 
flops limp and wet into your lap. Whatever ominous energy once possessed the terribly cursed hat is gone. It is now simply a terrible hat. Uncursed Fedora. Plus one mysticality, nice. This hat is clean, both spiritually and laundrily. But the curse still li itself still lives, transfixed as a dreamlike construct within the machine. Hmm, see, energy curses are like energy, Sir Codsworth. They can't be created or destroyed, only changed. I can't remember who said that. Isaac Newman? Newton? Uh, Newton Newman, yeah. <laughs> and that machine knows how to take a curse from one object and put it on itself. But as for how you change a curse, well, I don't know. That's some higher consciousness spiritualist stuff. Don't know much about that. I'm more of a Newton Newman sort of guy. The fedora's curse bounces around the innards of this machine, daring you to come project your consciousness inside of it. Sounds safe, I'll do it. I see. I see. Federal Reserve. I I heard thy death call, creature. Rest now. I will find in thy murderer. I see. A tree fell before its time. A ground stained with sin. Yes. At an Arcadia ego. Even in Arcadia there is death. Even in paradise there is a killer. Thou know who I am and why I am here. Aye, Cutter. There has been a murder. What knoweth thou of murder? That I did not do the murder, and that is all. What more have thee for me? Only this. I am one of three brothers. One of us always tellings the truth. One of us always lies. And the third of us does not speak in at all, but honks. If I find in thee a liar, there is no thing I can do to save in thee. I could. Thou art a servant of the wood. Yo, these guys are cool. Also, I just realized they've got several hats on. The Feist Tree. So, he says there's three of them. One of them only honks, and he didn't do it. So, if we find out that uh, one of them doesn't honk, that means he's a liar. Big power in the wood today, Cutter. Aye, a tree has fallen in the forest, and it has made a sin. But not me a sinner, that I assure thee. Thou claims to be without sin? None of us is without sins, but mine do not run to murder. Then whose? Look for my brother. Thy brother speakens of three brothers. This is fairy talk. No thing has honkin' in this land since Mother Duck laid the big egg. No honkin' since then? No sire. I see. Something is rotten in the wood, Cutter. I am Morda. With perversions at its source. Speak to me of perversions. I have no thing to say. For I do not tarry with them. What do thou tell in me? I am troubled by the moida, but of it I know no thing. I warn thee, my forgiveness makes no room for liars. Thou will do what thou must, Cutter, I have no doubt. I do not honken, sire, I swear in upon it. Never hast thou honken? Never, never, tis a sin in mine eyes. Long may thee grow. Interesting. Thou lie about honkin. What's... what say? Thy brother's honkin not. Thou wouldst lie to the cutter of the wood. Thou wouldst do moida in the wood. 
Aye, thou hast the right of it. I sought only to distract in thee while I am making my whilst I am making my escape. Goodbye, Cutter. Do not run from me, tree. Thou do not run? Nay, I grow in. In one hundred years I will have grown so tall and strong thine axe will never fell fall in me. But I will not wait one hundred years. Die, Mordor. We good? Big rot in the wood today, Cutter, and... Uh, wait, what? No, that's not you. You don't talk like that. Dark thoughts of trees, axes, and bloody sap cling to your skin. You shake them off like dreadful cobwebs. You're not sure what just happened, but as you turn over the form formerly terribly cursed fedora in your hands, you feel confident that the curse which plagued the starchy little felt thing has finally gone for good. Put the hat back on. It nearly sparkles now. Ooh, also gives me maximum HP. Appreciate that. Now all you've got to reckon with is whatever is whether you're the kind of guy who goes around wearing a fedora. I love it. I do indeed. Nice hat. How how'd it go? I uh it worked, I guess? Great. What was it like? I had some kind of crazy dream. There was a woodcutter that was me, I guess? And these talking trees? And one of them had sinned. You know what? Never mind. Some kind of crazy dream is plenty for me. Okay, good. Now, can we go to bed? I think so. Oh, so we've got some good XP here. We can grab this. And we'll grab this shortly. We need ten more XP to get that. Improved loafing. Oh yeah, that's we've got one extra moxie from food right now. You are a minimum visible person. You occupy space and are capable of moving through it and perceiving things. Oh, that's helpful. I generally like to be able to do that. Ooh. Not me. Never learned. Jessica? Sure. You sit down and Jessica sits opposite you. Play white this time. I do have something that gives stench armor. Um. Jadube a queen? What? You literally can't do any of these things on your first move. Turn what? Jessica moves a bishop and captures one of your pawns. Now what? Develop one of your rooks? Moves the king, captures one of your bishops. Advance one of your rooks. Apparently checkmate. What? Okay. Ooh, hello. It's a shelf for knickknacks and tchotchke. Tchotchkes. There's an old rag doll on the top shelf. Must have been left by the previous tenant. Oh dear. Okay, that's not ominous. A simple writing desk with no chair or pens or paper or anything. Time to get unpacked and get some sleep. You're dead tired, but you should sleep in these. But you shouldn't sleep in these wet clothes. Go unpack your trunk before you go to sleep. Lots of empty space in here. You should try to acquire a bunch of random crap to clutter it up with. Television set. You've heard of these. Unfortunately, no shows have been invented yet. That tracks. Ah! What the heck? You stamp out the flames, but it's a total loss. Everything you own has been reduced to ashes. Everything? Everything except, bizarrely, the stamp from Murray's letter. It's got a picture of a cute dog on it. Weirdly, it isn't even charred. You are very ready for this day to be over. So we sleep. A dream about school. Okay. These dorm beds are so uncomfortable. It's Poder, sir, my favorite literary ghost. Lots of people in this hallway, it seems. Hello, hello. How's it going? 
remember which locker is mine. I can't remember which locker is mine. I'm sorry, I don't know. It's alright, I'll figure it out eventually. Oh, I see. Nice faces you've got there. Six lockers, check the seventh one. Oh dear. You open the first locker to reveal a thriving colony of ants. Peanut butter. Babe Ruth. Empty. Cookbooks, but they're all in French. Six locker opens onto the vast, uncaring emptiness of space. You slam it shut quickly so as not to suffocate. There isn't a seventh one. I said check the seventh one. And I said there are only six lockers. Check the seventh locker now. Okay, geez, you look in the seventh locker. It's filled with old school papers. Look at the papers. They've all got your name on them. They're your papers. How I Spent My Summer by Sir Codsworth III, age six. This summer, I visited my Uncle Murray. Uncle Murray is funny. He knows magic. I had a fun time with Uncle Murray. The end. Underneath the pile of school papers, you find... Ugh. Check this book out 13 years ago and have spent the last 12 years and 50 weeks feeling slightly guilty about not returning. Hell yeah! Worth it. Oh yeah, dude, I can maybe tell you which locker is yours? That one's clearly mine. Always less crowded now. Cool. Our founder, Branworth Gorvunculus III. This lady looks friendly. Hello there, you must be. She flips through the book on her desk. Ah, uh, here we are. The third. Sir Codsworth the third. Yes, that is me. I'm your academic advisor. It's time for you to choose your class. Oh, good. I was wondering if we would even be able to. But I dropped out. In real life, certainly. You must, however, choose a class. Oh, I get it. This is where I pick a character class. Now then, it looks like there are three classes for you to choose from. There's advanced kicking and throwing. This class is for pig skinners. I think cow wranglers is what they called it in the West of Loathing. Then we have overview of curd conjuring. And this is a class for cheese wizards. Which is your magic, but also it was uh, bean sorcerers or something. And finally, we are Time Signatures 504. And this is courses for jazz agents, which is what we will be doing. There's an achievement for um, completing all nine courses. I'm guessing those are like classes. It says it requires multiple playthroughs. So that'd be fun to get. Good replayability. Masters of syncopation and improvisation, jazz agents use their rhythm and moxie to move through the world in style. In combat, they attack with subtlety, weakening their enemies and stacking the odds in their favor over time. Hell yeah. Alrighty, you're a jazz agent. The name's the third. Sir Codsworth the third. That totally doesn't work, but it also does. Now then, that's just the minor matter of your minor. It looks like you've already completed it doesn't say what you studied. Cryptobotany, applied insectology, the psychology of rocks. We'll take cryptobotany. You're an expert in all manner of plant-based arcana. Yup. Gather crafting ingredients from plants. Well, with that, I believe we're done. Feel free to wake up and go about your day. Er, how would I go about doing that? She smiles and points at the door on the right side of the screen. I mean the right side of the dream. Just through that door. Thank you. Ah, the abyss. You could gaze into it for days. Nice lady at the desk says that the doorway leads back to your waking life. And is that the end of the prologue?
You awake feeling surprisingly refreshed. Yesterday's adventure is leaving you none the worse for wear. Your effects reset every day. Ah, and here's all the rest of the available. Skills we can buy. I see. Bend the truth for fun and profit? Doesn't count as lying if you do it for a really good reason. Oh, we have to get that. Rhythm in your blood. Spooky armor. Act earlier in fights, that's handy. And that's from the, the botany thing. Cool, cool. This one too, I assume. Cool, okay, I dig, I dig. Well, I think this is going to be where we're going to leave it off for today. Really looking forward to seeing what this has in store. So thank you everyone for joining me. I hope you had fun. And I will see you all next time for some more Shadows Over Loathing.